Hi again folks, Dr. Tom McNamara here for our course in prep for college math. Right now we are going through operations with whole numbers and we've gone through the operations of addition, subtraction, multiplication and now we're doing the fourth arithmetic operation which is division. Okay, so we'll go over uh, just the basics of division in this video and then we'll have a follow-up where we work through some long division examples to give you a feel for how those work. Okay, so let's look at an example like this. Oh, okay, I guess before I, uh, before I actually do the example, let me give you some lingo here or vocabulary. If I was to do a problem like this, let's say 15 divided by 3. Okay, now we know this is 5. We'll talk about ways to interpret it in just a minute. This number is called your divisor. 15 divided by 3. Of course, that's our division symbol. Be very careful. Right, those are little dots. Okay, we're not doing this. That's a plus. Note the difference, okay? This number here is called your dividend, and this is your quotient, okay? Divisor, dividend, quotient, okay? And there are a couple of ways that we could actually indicate the operation of division. We could use the standard division symbol that I used up here, 15 divided by 3. We could use a fraction. Okay, so something kind of important to keep on your toes here. Fractions indicate division. Or, we could use the long division setup, okay, which we will go over a little bit more as, as the uh, section progresses. So all these things are indicating the same operation of doing 15 divided by 3. Okay? Note here the divisor goes on the outside. Okay, we're taking 3 and dividing into 15. Okay, so if we were to continue talking about this 15 divided by 3 example, one way to think about 15 divided by 3 is we are breaking 15 up into groups of 3. Okay, so if I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. If I have 15 counters, I am breaking them up into groups of three until I'm all done. So I have one group of three, second group of three, third group of three, fourth group of three, and a fifth group of three. Okay? So to say 15 divided by three equals five means I can take a set of 15 things and break them up into five equal groups, each of size three. And note the equivalence between our division facts and our multiplication facts. Okay, every division fact is equivalent to a multiplication fact. Okay, 3 times 5 is 15, so 5 groups of 3 give us 15. How many groups of 3 do you have in 15? 5. It's like two sides of the same coin, okay? So, let me 
me do another uh, kind of similar one here. If I were to do 13 divided by 4, well, let's kind of do same setup, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. I've got a collection of 13 items. I am breaking them up into groups of four, and I want to see how many groups. Well, there's one group of four, there's a second group of four, there's a third group of four. Okay, but we can see here, there's a little difference. Okay, one group of four, two group of four, three groups of four. I, I, I don't quite have all 13 things covered. I have one left over. We call that our remainder. Okay, uh, we're going to get into, uh, of course, fractions and decimals a little bit later in the course. Right now we're dealing with whole numbers, so keep your remainders as whole numbers. So the remainder, of course, you'll remember, is how much is kind of left over if the division doesn't go in evenly. And one other quick thing to note. is how division works when we're using 0 and 1. Okay? If I were to take any number I want, let's say 17, and I divide by 1, I get 17. If you use the interpretation that we have put up on this board twice already in this video, you'll understand very quickly why. We write out the 17 objects. How many groups of 1 are in those 17 objects? Well, 17. Okay? So, whenever you divide by 1, you get whatever you started with. Let me imagine this. What if I had 11 objects, and I divided by 11? If I take 11 objects, how many groups of 11 can I make? Well, if I have 11 objects, I can make one group of 11. Whenever you take a number and divide it by itself, you get 1. All right, so, that's working with 1. Let's talk a little bit about working with 0. Okay? 0 divided by anything. Let's say 0 divided by, I don't know, Seven. Okay, when we were working with our example before, 15 divided by 3 equals 5, we talked about taking a set of 15 things, dividing it into different groups of 3, and we saw we had 5 groups. Okay, we could also consider doing like this. Keep on adding 3's until you get to 15. So you have 3, 6, 9, 12, 15. You need 5 threes to get to the 15. Okay, so this is how many of that do you need to get here? So here we're talking, how many sevens do I need to throw into the mix to get zero? Well, if I throw in even a single seven, I would have more than zero. If I throw in one seven, I have seven. If I throw in two sevens, I have 14. If I throw in three sevens, I have 21. So I'm going the wrong direction. My problem is throwing in that first seven. I shouldn't have thrown in anything, and I would have had zero. So zero divided by any non-zero number is zero. Okay. So if you have a zero as the dividend, your answer is zero. Having a zero as the divisor, on the other hand, that actually works out a little weird. Let me show you. Let me try this. If I had six divided by zero, uh, what would this be? Well, let's talk about something a little more familiar before we get to that. 
6 divided by 2. Okay, we know that. 6 divided by 2 is 3. And this division fact is true because 2 times 3 equals 6. All right? So, if I'm thinking about what I could fill in that box with to make a true statement, I'm really talking about this multiplication fact. I want to be able to get a 6, so 0 times blank equals 6. So I'm looking for what I can fill in this box to make a true statement here now. Okay, my only problem is that 0 times any number is 0. So no matter what number I fill in, on the left-hand side I'm going to get 0. I am never going to get 6. There is nothing I could fill in in that blank to make a true statement. So no matter what number we pick, it won't work. No number will work. No number will work in this blank. So there is no number that will work in that blank either. Okay, so division by zero is undefined. Okay, division by zero is undefined. Division by two is great, because you can fill in whatever you, you, you can find a number that you can fill in there to hit your target. But if you're talking about zero, there's no way to hit this target, because anything times zero is zero, so you're kind of stuck. So, zero as your dividend, you're good. Zero as your divisor, uh-uh, undefined. Okay, so just some peculiarities of working with 0 and 1 in division. All right, so I'm going to post some notes with some worked out examples involving long division uh, to give you some, something to work with for this homework assignment. Now, remember, I want you to show me steps, okay? If you're not showing steps, you're not going to get credit for doing the assignment, okay? I need to see that work. It's your work that I'm grading. There are a couple of problems where I specifically say you don't need to show any work. I will indicate those in the assignment. Otherwise, make sure you show me the work, okay?